We've got lots of problems and Icario is basically my attempt to help solve some of them. It's a bit tricky to do, but let me try to summarize what Icario is about and why it exists as briefly as possible. I'll try to just give you three points. And the first point is the challenge is real. I think if you look at the, the results people are getting, if you look at kind of health markers of the world that we live in, lots of them are not looking good. We've basically got rising numbers across all kinds of troubling markers such as anxiety, depression, obesity, and countless more. Like there's so many ways, and those are just the ones that we can kind of measure, right? We can see, okay, more people are, are seeking therapy for this problem or taking medication for this problem. And even there, right? Medication, like medication abuse, substance abuse is another one of those. We're just, there's too much of it. Clearly there's too much of it happening. But even to those, those are like the, the problems that come at the tail end of a longer story where we have, let's say, lower level problems that are not necessarily medical problems, but you know, how many people are just generally stressed or just generally dissatisfied or miserable most of the time or just constantly seeking distraction, constantly seeking some kind of an escape, feeling directionless, feeling, and just generally feeling small, you know, feeling like they don't know what to do with life. They don't feel like they're doing enough. They don't feel like they're enough and basically dragging around all kinds of emotional baggage. And in short, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of suffering that's happening. And I think one thing we need to acknowledge is that a lot of this suffering is a result of the system that we live in. There's an interesting paradox at play here, which is that the way out of the suffering for you personally is to basically take personal responsibility and make change happen. But the cause of the suffering isn't your personal responsibility. Like the cause of the suffering, and again, we can see this because these problems are so widespread and so common, it's not your personal failing that you're suffering like this. It's a result of the system we live in. And I would say that the world that we live in is basically inhumane in the sense that it is not optimal for human thriving. It's not optimal for human well-being and happiness. And I think this is a factor that a lot of us tend to underestimate or not even be aware of. It kind of feels like we live in the most advanced civilization ever, which is very likely true. And it feels like progress is good. So we have better and better technology, for example, every year. So that must be good. It must mean that our lives are getting better. But actually, the environment we live in, the system we live in, it's, it's not all good and not all forms of progress are actually good for us. To make matters worse, most of us lack any kind of clear role model or any, any system or any example to follow for how to solve this problem. So for most people, it is, is more common that you have kind of a, a toxic or combative relationship or difficult relationship with people in your family, for example, and that you know, you're struggling, you don't know what to do with life, and your parents are also struggling and they don't know what to do with life, so you can't really learn from them. And you maybe have examples of success in your life, but then, you know, maybe someone in your family is wealthy, but they're working 16 hours a day and they're overweight and they're an alcoholic and they're miserable. So it's like, that's not a great example either. And this is a big problem because humans mainly learn by modeling behavior they see other people do. And we just, we just lack this kind of guidance, these kinds of role models. And the recipes that we're given, like the ideas we have about, oh, get an education and work hard and that, you know, then that will take care of things. How many people is this still true for? I mean, how many people do you know who, you know, got a good education and now have a great job and, and all this kind of stuff? And how many people do you know who got an education as a result of that they're in debt and still struggling to find good work? So the struggle is real. This is a challenge that we have to deal with. But there's also a flip side to this, and this is my second point. The flip side to everyone living in an inhumane world is that everyone's basically always going around with the brakes on, right? We don't even know what we're actually capable of because it's so normal for us to live in a world where, you know, the food we eat isn't really that good for us. Our habits aren't very healthy habits. We're constantly distracted. We have, we get fed all the wrong ideas and information and we're constantly stressed and anxious and so on. That means that, you know, if you took all these things off, if you could eliminate all these obstacles, you could 
do so much better and be so much better. And basically what I'm saying is you don't even know what that feels like because you've grown up in this world surrounded by people who've grown up in this world. Like everybody always has the brakes on. You don't even know what it would feel like to be fully you, right? To be fully you without dragging around all these problems, without holding yourself back and without being held back by external circumstances. But that means that you are capable of far more. And I really mean that you're capable of more than you even think. Like if you think about what does your ideal version of you, what do you imagine that would look like? What is the ideal version of you capable of? What I'm saying is that you're actually capable of much more than that. Your problems are solvable. There is a pragmatic and practical series of steps that you could take that would take you from where you are right now to being in a much better place, much closer to actually unleashing your full potential. And this is something that I say because I've experienced it myself, but I've even more so experienced it with other people, with other people who I've worked with. I have seen how it's really astonishing how quickly someone can go from a kind of really low state of being, like lots of suffering, lots of misery, loads of problems, to becoming like their better self, becoming this person that, like I say, they didn't even know they were capable of being. And this is the point of Ikario. This is what I want to spread. And that brings me to my third point, which is that you are capable of much more with the right people than alone. So I think that one of the pathologies in our culture is that individualism is way overrated. We have lots of stories of individual kind of, you know, the, the lone hero, the lone wolf, the lone inventor slash entrepreneur. And we, we tend to lionize that individual success story. And I think it's totally, totally overrated. Humans are a social animal and with the right group of people, you can achieve much more, much faster than you can on your own. Now I say this as someone who took individualism to an absolute extreme. And I should also add, I was successful by myself. So I am one of those lone wolf success stories, at least earlier in my life. You could definitely paint me as that lone entrepreneur, you know, pulls himself up by his bootstraps kind of thing. And socializing and working together with other people is not something that came easy to me. In fact, I, had, I really had to teach myself how to do that and I found it quite difficult. But I can tell you, like even for someone like me, it is much, much more effective to work with the right people. And there too, I think most people don't even have a sense of what's possible because I think we're, it doesn't happen by default, right? A good kind of community, a good team culture, a good group culture doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by default. And we're much more used to being in kind of a crab bucket social dynamic where, where people are pulling each other down, where people kind of try to keep everyone at their low level. And if you're interested in personal development, you've probably experienced this like most people when they get interested in personal development or interested in doing something ambitious, experience pushback from their friends and family and peers. You know, you, someone sees you reading a self-help book and they're like, ah, what are you doing reading that garbage? Or you say, hey, I want to start a business and they say, ah, don't do it, it's too risky. You know, you're going to fail, most businesses fail, etc., etc." I remember this as well. At one point I, I floated the idea of maybe I want to write a book at some point. And the immediate response I got was, you can't just write a book. And really, isn't that a bit strange? I mean, you know, eventually someone has to sit down and just write a book, right? Otherwise we wouldn't have any books. But unfortunately, this is, this is usually normal, right? We're usually not surrounded by people who are kind of encouraging and accepting and uplifting and, and all this kind of stuff. You can create the right kind of community where you will experience that effect of the outcome being much greater than the sum of all parts, meaning that four people together can do more, can achieve more than, than four times the amount that each individual person could achieve. So those are the three key ideas. We live in an inhumane world and that keeps us down, that causes loads of problems and suffering. These problems are solvable and as a result of that you're actually capable of far more than you think and you can go far further and do far more with the right kind of people around you than alone. And this is what Ikario is about. The purpose of Ikario is to teach everything that I've experienced myself and learned myself in my own transformation from a really low state of suffering to living a life of great freedom. 
and where I want to teach everything that I've seen applicable to other people. So the kinds of transformations that people who've worked with me have gone through. Ikario is my attempt to take that and scale it and spread it as far and wide as possible. So with that, welcome to Ikario.